This week's episode of the Electric Samba Bus, we got to play with some batteries, lithium ion batteries. Plus, I'll share with you my experience of buying an electric car at a local dealership. Hey guys, how's it going? I hope you guys are find yourselves warm this uh, time of year. Uh, here in California, we we are freezing. Uh, I think it was down to 75 degrees outside today. Uh, believe me, it's freezing for us Californians. Um, but on a more serious note, uh, we're here inside this week now getting back into working on the Samba. Um, and particularly in the battery pack that we're getting. This week I got, I got delivery of a lot of the products that I was ordering to be able to test some of these batteries. Um, if you can hear that, that's a fan. I got a, uh, a PowerLab 6, one of those little chargers that RC people use to charge batteries. Um, I got this charger because it was the easiest way to graph the performance of these cells. Um, so I've started testing them. I started first, I started charging them and I bought a bunch of these little cheap 18650 chargers from eBay uh, you know there were five bucks so I bought about five of them or something like that and for so I have a little cluster of uh, chargers and I think um, I just paralleled a bunch of four cell holders right next to them and it's taking now you know five times as long to charge but uh, every time I go up there and I see green lights, then I, I, I'm charging about 20 batteries at a time and, you know, on a day and a half and about every two days I go over there and take it out. So I've, I've gone through a bunch of cells and I started really charging the, the worst of the worst, basically, or the worst of all the batteries. I was able to put together about eight boxes uh, that are going to end up being modules of uh, cells that had a acceptable voltage level. So they had some voltage above two volts or something like that. And then I, two of the boxes or about 300 cells were completely dead or below one volt. Um, those are the first ones that I'm charging. And therefore those are the first ones that I'm starting to test now. And so there's not looking very, very good. Here's what I did with these batteries. Um, I put groups of six of them in series. And then I connected all the balancing leads and all this stuff that this little charger comes with. And, um, and that, then I started charging. Actually, no, I started discharging them because they were charged. Um, so it started counting uh, the milliamp hours that was pulling out, discharging out. Um, so then what would happen is that it would beep every time one of the cells would drop down three volts, uh, which was, I said, that's, I set my cutoff voltage to three volts. Um, and then what happens is that I would then remove that cell and put a fresh cell in there. And then I would keep track of the rest of the cells. And then the second time it would beep, you know, it would be around 1500 milliamps. So then I knew that cell had 1500 milliamps and then I would replace that cell and, and then I would just go eliminating each, each cell as it was uh, falling below the three volt uh, threshold. So it's a time consuming and it's a lot of work. You got to be, you know, you hear the thing just beeps every once in a while, every 20 minutes and you have to come and change the battery. I managed to do uh, five groups of six cells. Um, and they're not, it's not looking too, too good. Um, I think out of these group of 30 cells, um, I think only about five or six uh, cells came in above 2000 milliamps. The rest of them were below and they were not, you know, someone said that I was, in their experience, these cells are not good and they, they were getting 500 milliamp capacity in some of the cells. I haven't gotten, one that has been that bad. I think this, the, the lowest capacity that I've gotten out of this first group is this guy, which is 1200 milliamps. Um, so it's not looking very good, but then again, I am starting with the worst 
cells in the whole bunch. Um, I expect to see a lot better once I start getting to the cells that actually had some charge and they had a healthy charge on them. So that's what I've been doing with the batteries. I have recently, just right now, just uh, about an hour ago, uh, installed the Power Lab uh, app, Windows app, so that we can, you know, do the, the whole uh, um, graphing and stuff. Um, I hate working with Windows. I have Parallels installed in my computer and I have Windows installed in there. It crashes all the time. It's just a pain to work with. But here we are, people are making applications <laughs> that uh, keeps me bringing, you know, having to work with Windows. So I did that. I struggled a little bit, but now I got it working. Um, and we'll, I'm going to be able to show you like an average of, you know, what, what I'm getting off of these cells. So. The next big thing after that is going to be uh, putting these cells together. And if you saw a couple of uh, weeks ago that I, uh, the viewers sent me some uh, emails, let me know these little clips that uh, they sell in China so that you can put 18650 cells, arrange uh, them in modules and stuff. So I got enough, I think I got like a hundred of those clips with, with make me be able to put about 150 of these cells together and this is what we have here uh this is a module 150 cells that's about the size it would be um it gets about a half the the weight of the uh of the prismatics from calve and you know the the lithium iron phosphate uh so um what are, what are we gonna do here is this is great to be able to test my first cells and and just to be able to see how they perform in, re in the real world pushing a real car you know i can sit here all day and do little tests on each one of these cells and stuff and uh, but really what i want to do is put them out there in my samba and then go down the street and see you know what the continue 200 continuous amp load off of these how they will react if they will warm up if they so um I mean, I'm doing some of those tests right here. I think I'm discharging these cells at, uh, at two and a quarter amps, you know, 2.2, which would equal about one C. Um, these cells are going to see, I think, a maximum of like two Cs, but only uh, in bursts, short, bur short bursts. Um, and the continuous uh, amp dr draw or load, they are, the continuous load they're going to see is going to be um, about half a C, you know, 0.5 Cs. Um, so that's, uh, you know, that's what I'm kind of doing in here. And I, I order some little uh, temperature sensors that I haven't gotten here. Um, but when they get here, then that's what I'm going to use to be able to, you know, kind of monitor the temperature on these cells and stuff. So. The next big project, I think, now is uh, putting this module together, like wiring it together. I mean, right now it's just the cells are there and there's, there's nothing connecting them. So for that, I have bought a little roll of um, nickel strip tape. Uh, this is what they commonly use to um, uh, spot weld the battery packs for RC cars. and. Um, yeah, it's kind of thin and stuff. I don't know if it's going to handle the draws, but I will figure it out. I think uh, I have some ideas on how to put the stuff together. Um, I'm going to make, here, let me show you. In order to, to spot weld these, uh, these modules together, I, have, I, I actually get to make my own spot welder. And um, I was looking up on the internet and it seems it's like really easy to make one, uh, a capacitive spot welder. You just buy a big, giant capacitor um, and then you have a uh, some way of interrupting or or connecting that spot weld all at once in, in two probes in the same side of the uh, of the cell there so it's a pretty basic little design um, I order a two farad 12 volt uh, audio uh, capacitor uh, you know, everything that I've read says that, yeah, you could actually do it with one farad, but some of these 
capacitors are actually uh, overrated and you know they come in less than what their rating says so i thought eh, two two farads should should probably do it you know if it's got one in there it should be able to do it um what you end up using it as a switch uh it's a big giant uh, what is it called tyristor try no it's a try try restore yeah, so I bought a 1600 volt, 100 amp stud tristor, silicon control rectifier. Um, it's essentially what it is. It's like a, it, it's like a solid state relay that is gonna. You use a low voltage circuit to activate it, and what it does, it connects the two farad capacitor into the probes that are going to be touching the. Uh, the nickel plating uh, strip on top of the cells um, so I'm gonna be building that next week I'll we're gonna I'm gonna record that so that you show you guys what the results are but that's the plan anyways um, the other thing I was thinking of doing was using so I don't know if you guys knew this but there is such a thing as conductive epoxy electrically conductive epoxy so what I was thinking of doing, instead of doing these little plastic things, because they actually they'll add up. I think they'll, they'll they're like gonna cost around the same amount of the cells that I'm getting here. So the other thing that I was thinking is that if I buy aluminum uh, nuts, uh, like 830, 830, 832, 632 threaded aluminum nuts, then I can use this electric conductive epoxy to glue them to each side of the cells. And what that will allow me to do would be to just make a plate, you know, eighth of an inch aluminum plate with holes on it and be able to just screw all these cells um, to the side. And those would be the cathode and the anode. Um, and they will screw right onto the nut that I epoxied onto the sides of the two cells. Now, it seems like a lot of work. But I think you can get, you know, quick, you know, I think you can do it very quickly. 150 of these little knots and you put them, you go by module and stuff. Um, the other thing is that this uh, epoxy is not cheap. Uh, it's quite expensive. So I have to kind of do the math and see which one's uh, going to be the more, which one's going to work best. First of all, if it's actually going to work. And then the other thing is if it's, uh, you know, how expensive it's going to be. It might be just cheaper to, to do this. But the advantages of doing this way, of gluing those nuts on the side, is that you could take the module apart and replace cells. If, if for some reason you, you want to go and check them and test them, all you have to do is just unscrew 150 <laughs> little tiny screws. And then the, the one cathode or the one anode would, would come out. And then you can just replace them with other cells that you have glued the, uh, the little nuts to them. So that's an idea. Uh, I'm going to do some tests this week to see if, uh, uh, see how well that works. Um, and then uh, we're going to go from there. So we're here at the uh, Chevrolet dealer. We're gonna see if we can test drive a what, Chevy Volt. You guys uh, probably heard Jack mention last week that I uh, bought a, uh, a Chevy Volt for my wife. Um, yeah, after the LA Auto Show, we, uh, you know, we kinda, kinda liked the Volt. It was, it was the right price. It was, it looked the right way. I'm not, not particularly a, a fan of uh, you know uh, American cars this car I love the fact that on the outside it looks just like another Chevy like nothing special it, it doesn't look very fancy it doesn't look very luxurious or anything but once you're inside the leather seats the heated seats the uh, oh. It's very luxurious. It's like instrument cluster right there is like all high tech and stuff. It's got these touch buttons. It's got a 
navigation on it built in. It's got the OnStar thing. Um, so that's the car. Um, the buying experience, let me tell you, it was a big joke. Um, I, I don't have a problem with people making a living providing services. I, that's what I do, you know, at, at Jack 35. We, we manufacture our product, we, we, we mark it up, and then we sell it. But see, the difference between me and these uh, network of dealerships um, is that I'm pretty honest as to how much I want for my product. You know, I, I, I built something, let's say, uh, for example, this little guy here, you know, it's a it's a, uh, it's a milled aluminum thing, a billet aluminum little part that we, that I designed and I had manufactured here in the U.S. and stuff. Well, by the time I'm done, I put a price to it, you know, I was like, I want $30 for this thing or 35 or 40 or 20 or whatever it is. And when I put it on my, on my site or I, I send it over to my resellers, then there's a minimum advertised price and then there's a suggested retail price and there's this whole scheme of little things but there's no difference between you buying it and paying you know 35 bucks and then the next person coming in and buying it and paying 20 35 bucks that's what people pay when they want to buy this one of my products now buying car is not as simple as that and, and the thing is that you have to go into these uh, dealerships and they absolutely knew nothing of the car I mean nothing the one guy I mean I I'll show you some of these little clips where the guy the stuff that these guys are telling me you know uh, regenerative braking because I feel like there are a lot of misconceptions about it regenerative braking has absolutely nothing to do with those middle desk metal discs down there nothing to do with that nothing to do with friction it's all about the electric motors so when your foot's on the accelerator, we've got these electric motors that are kind of spinning forward and they are indirectly taking the wheels with them. And when you step on the brakes, the electric motor starts to run backwards. And when you step on the brakes, the electric motor starts to run backwards. They were saying that, yeah, there are different 240 volt chargers, but I have to be careful because sometimes it's a different voltage, you know, it's like, well, if they're, you know, um, I, I asked one guy how big the battery is, the sales guy, you know, and, and he literally said, oh, it's about this big and about this big. Yeah, absolutely had no idea. I want to check out a, uh, an electric car and I want to test drive an electric car. Guess what? They had it completely uncharged. I mean, it was it was dead. So I had to test drive this car using the gas engine like. So here's my problem with these guys. They absolutely offer no service whatsoever, no useful service to me. You know, maybe some of you might say, well, at least you don't have to pay for, to bring the car over from Detroit where they manufacture it. Guess what? When you see the itemized uh, list of things that you pay for the car, that cost gets all passed over to me, the, uh, the uh, customer. And so I do have to pay for someone to drive the car all the way from Detroit here to California. Uh, so what is it that these guys are offering? I mean, it's not, uh, it's, were they friendly at the very least? Eh, not very friendly. They're just, they were trying very hard to get every single, the most amount of money out of my pocket. Uh, you know, and, and that's the shady part about it. And they don't say like, okay, this car is worth $20,000. Here you go. Or 27 or 35, you know, it's like, how much is the price? Well, don't worry. That's just sticker price. You know, and no one pays that. So. You know, it's you're going to pay however much we can get out of you kind of thing. And so we play this little game going back and forth. Who's going to like a guy that's trying to swindle you out of money? You know what I mean? Uh, just and then, then the next guy that comes is if it's better at bargaining or whatever, then he gets to pay way less than me. Or maybe he pays way more, you know, so they took advantage of that guy just because I, you know, I don't know. It's it's a thing. I. I think uh, dealers should go away, and I think that the thing that Tesla is doing, it's definitely the way to go. Um, uh, it's a more transparent buying, shopping experience, car shopping experience, and I think that's where it all should head. And I'm sorry, dealerships and salespeople, but high pressure, you know, you should you should get out of that because I think you guys are gonna disappear. Uh, this is a this is a new world, and um, and I think you you guys are. In, your days are counted, I think. Um, All right, folks, uh, we have done it. We drove over to the Chevy 
dealer and we are walking away with a brand new Chevy Bolt. So I guess now we're a owners of a Chevy Bolt. We're giving away this uh, this guy. This is a Honda Pilot. It served us very good for two and a half years. Uh, except at 16 miles per gallon, it was really not that great uh, on gas. And um, we might miss some of the space that we're giving up, but we definitely were not going to miss the $70 uh, tank fill-ups that we used to do. So. Goodbye, uh, Honda Pilot. Anyway, so that's the car. I, it's great. We love it. Uh, it's great for the wife because it's uh, it's like an electric car on training wheels, basically. I don't have to worry if she didn't forgot to charge it last night and now she can't go to work or if she went too far, you know, shopping after work and now I have to find, you know, she's stuck somewhere with a dead battery. With the uh, Chevy Volt, it's, you know, it's no, no problem. So, um, yeah, it's cool. So this is the update for this week. Um, I hope you guys keep yourselves warm. I know, there, I know in some parts of the country it, it's actually cold. Not like here in California that we just think it's cold uh, because it's below 80 degrees. Um, Stay warm, stay busy, keep your builds up, uh, and uh, submit some videos so I'm not the only one here just, you know, uh, uh, talking away about my project and stuff. So, uh, till next week, we'll see you guys. Uh, have a good week. Bye. lost our wheel right here folks if you enjoy my videos don't forget to subscribe to my youtube channel and join the conversation down below by leaving a comment uh, if you don't then also leave me a comment so i can make these videos better thank you <laughs>